Dan Pan is like one of those songwriters that, to my mind, after a while, if you're if in the days when I would frequently live through secondhand bins and I'd see a record by somebody I knew, I knew the name of, but I maybe owned one single by or a track on a compilation. Because when I came to America, there were a lot of great records to be picked up. And I'd look down and see, oh, I don't know any of the songs on this record. I see there's a Dan Penn song I've never heard before. That would be the clincher. I knew that I had to hear the Dan Penn song because if I hadn't heard it before, I needed to hear it. And there are some songwriters that they, they would even say the name of the songwriters on English radio. Most would say, here's the new record by the Beatles, or here's the new record by Ken Dodd or Engelbert Humperdinck. But they would sometimes say, here's a new song by Burt Backrack, and there would be two or three versions by Backrack and David song in the charts. Same song. Goffin and King were a bit like that because you saw their name, their credits on Beatles records. And obviously some of them, Holland Dozier Holland were like that as well mm -hmm. because they wrote a lot of the Motown songs. But Dan Payne was a little less in, in, in the mainstream of pop music and is because you speak of Dan in the present tense and Spooner. And they wrote this extraordinary group of songs, you know, a lot of them in the late uh, 60s. And they just make no acknowledgement of all the road signs that people try to erect to separate music. You can't really tell where the country and the soul and the rock and roll and the gospel stops and begins. You can't tell, you know, is the singer Aretha Franklin or is it Graham Parsons? The mm -hmm. same song, right woman, same song. They wrote it. Um, the, probably the most famous Dan Penn song is Dark End of the Street. An unbelievable song. That's written with Chip's moment. Uh, one I have sung is uh, It Tears Me Up. Uh, a really great, great heartbreak song. You Left the Water Running, I'm Your Puppet. These are all unbelievable. And the, the most amazing thing to my mind is that as great as these songs are and as inspired as the versions are by the great vocalists like Aretha Franklin who covered them and many, many others, Dan is like one of the greatest singers American pop music has ever created. I'm going to say something very controversial to some people. Dan Penn is Elvis Presley if he had better taste. Ooh. Because you heard Elvis, it here. I <laughs> Elvis could be, he could get his personality in front of his good taste. He was an incredible singer, but Dan is every bit as good a singer as Elvis Presley and some because he has humility and restraint. And I clearly don't, otherwise I never would have said, I know I'm gonna offend Elvis Presley fans, but Dan Penn is Elvis Presley with the kind of taste that Dan Penn has anyway, because mm -hmm. he just has it. And if you listen to his record, Raining in Memphis, and imagine Elvis singing it, you know it would be kind of great because Elvis knew how to dramatize things, but he also had a tendency to melodrama as well. He did listen to some of his later records. They're terribly melodramatic, over over song. Really, that's just the way it is. You have to accept that as much as you love him, maybe it's because he was so larger than life. For me, Dan sings totally from the heart. And what's most extraordinary about this song uh, could be listed in two columns. One is this was recorded in a little community center in Brentford in West London. This is not a place you associate with Dan Penn and Spooner Oldham. Now, this was recorded for a label I used to co-own. Uh, you know, Dan, I think of Nick Lowe, you know, my who was produced my first mm -hmm. records, as being very much the same kind of songwriter as Dan Penn, in that he writes these songs that you feel have always existed, but they didn't because Dan or Nick had to write them. And they have this wonderful form that you can just get right away. And then, the second thing you have to say about this song is this is the greatest song that uses baseball as a metaphor for heartbreak. Mm -hmm. When you least expect it, fate stumbles in. You know, you think that could lead anywhere, but the hook line is outlet of left field. I don't know any other song of consequence 
about that's emotional. I mean, there's Take Me Out to the Ball Game and Centre Field. What other songs with a baseball metaphor are any good? 